Okay, so I know a lot of shows are like, don't try this at home. But you know what? The cast is in a lot of shows. On the cast, try this at home. Because truly, I want you to do it. I want you to do every experiment I ever do on here. I want you to one-up me. You can go to math class and sit on a lecture for an hour and a half, but you're not really going to learn that much unless you actually do the math. Anybody that likes pouring weird colored chemicals around in test tubes should do this too. Deer Topper was very vocal about their need of my headphones to be seen, so I put them back on. At the request of several people, actually. First things first, you're going to want to think of something that you want to take the DNA out of. If you're me, you want to decide what you're extracting DNA from before you start doing it. For this particular experiment, like I promise, we'll be using microscopic fungi. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, commonly known as baking yeast. The history of baking yeast is so closely tied to baking and fermentation with humans that its name even comes from the Latin for beer. After you finish this video when you want to do it yourself, uh, you can use any raw plant matter as for plants. That's not too dead. You can also use any raw animal matter, but uh, livers are the best problem. As for extracting human or your own DNA, the best substance to use for that is semen. Semen is there for the purpose of being DNA. Also a note for you, blood will not work because blood has no DNA in it and erythrocytes, scientific term for red blood cells, have no nuclei and no DNA in them. Humans are actually the only vertebrate that lack DNA in their erythrocytes or red blood cells. The only other exception is the four-toed lungless salamander. Let's go over the list of materials you're gonna need. First thing you're gonna need is distilled water. This is a must-have for any lab. And hey, if you're not gonna do another lab, just use the water for something else. Next thing you're gonna want is some salt. I'm sure you got some salt lying around. Want some detergent. It has to be liquid detergent. Powder detergent will not work. If you don't have detergent, you could substitute Dish washing soap or body wash. Shampoo, conditioner, and organic and or natural detergents will not work very well. Then you're going to want coffee filters. These coffee filters help you filter stuff. Lastly, you'll want some enzymic action with some meat tenderizer. If you don't have meat tenderizer, then you can go get some pineapple juice or some, uh, uh, what is that, contact lens cleaning fluid. These are enzymes that help break down stuff. Onward and forward to the lab. Now test tubes are really important in this case because you need something that is uh, tall and has a short radius across, which test tubes, perfect. I tried looking for other stuff, but it couldn't get anywhere. Now what is this test tube filled with? It's not water. Last thing you're gonna wanna need is alcohol, glacial alcohol. And this is what I used, Everclear, 75.5%. This is higher in concentration than that isopropyl alcohol that you do at the drugstore. But it costs about 10 times as much because people actually drink this stuff. If you'll notice, it has a fire hazard warning on the cover. Do me a favor and try not to drink anything that has a fire hazard warning. Hmm. Oh. Learn by example. Now remember that you're going to want that alcohol to be glacial, which is a chemist term for really cold. You know, glacier's cold. Make your alcohol an ice water bath, and don't just make it ice water, make it salt ice water. Because the adding of the salt will actually make it cooler. Now if you want to copy me, make sure you don't get the self-rising yeast. This is active dry, and if you'll notice, the only ingredient says yeast. Don't want potassium sorbitol or any other stuff. Now hopefully, as little as possible, the yeast will actually activate because I'm putting the yeast in water. But I'm not giving it any food. I'm not giving it any flour. And there's no other ingredients in here, so it's only dormant fungi. So here goes with this. The first step is to get what you want and put it in a bowl or something. Now in this case, I'm using something that has really small things and it's a powder. And I'm pretty sure it's actually going to dissolve into the water, which is pretty good. If you're going to do this with, say, peas, if they're frozen peas, you want to mash them up with a mortar and pestle and put some water with it. 
how much water you're going to want exactly twice as much in volume as you have as the material. If it's dried peas, you want to put it in the blender first and chop it up and then mix it with the water and smash it up with the mortar and pestle. Then stir it for an hour. You're going to want to have some pretty like runny pea soup. I did the same thing with mushrooms. Both worked out great. Oh man, I hope the yeast doesn't like grow on me. I probably will. Now, I got the yeast and the hot water mixed together. Warm water. Ah, uh, it smells terrible. Okay, I freaking messed up. Oh, because when I added the water, it was, it was a third of a cup, and now it's like three fourths of a cup. More, it's almost a cup. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Maybe I should just add the other stuff and see what happens. Ah, uh, that was so dumb. I know hot water makes yeast go crazy, but I think it's eating the dead yeast which is the most circular reasoning ever, apparently. Because the dead yeast die from starving. And how they starve? Well, they have no food. The live yeast eat the dead one. The end. Ugh. See, this is what happens when you take me with you doing a biology experiment, because I always mess biology experiments up. I also always mix up... I also, me I also always mess up complicated chemistry experiments. Because they take too much... They take too much of me doing this. Using my hands. I can't use my hands. I can use them to type, I can use them with the mouse, I can use them to play Halo, but not biotechnology. Ah, uh, Let's, okay, how about we carry on with the experiment, when I, even when I think it's a failure, and see if anything works. If you notice, this is the uh, complicated apparatus that I'm using. I uh, put in a coffee filter and pour the yeast in the top, and now uh, stuff is dripping down very slowly. And... Uh, I put it in the filter paper, and after an hour, I got this. I'm hoping this is enough. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in some detergent. Now, uh, I don't know exactly how much to add in, but it's been stirring it. Now, after you put in the detergent, you're going to want the mixture to wait for about 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, and where is that mixture? Where'd it go? Oh, right, I put it in the cooler. Ah, uh, well mixed, and it's pretty blue, because of the detergent. Excellent, got 15 milliliters. Next step is to add a pinch of tenderizing salt. Now you're going to want a stirring rod to stir those enzymes in there. You don't want to stir too hard, because DNA is floating around in there. Don't make any bubbles because it's detergent. It's easier to make bubbles than you think. Ah, uh, very good. And now is a very delicate part. We want to take the glacial alcohol and slowly pour it down into the tube. But we don't want it to, we, ideally we don't want to mix it all. We don't want it to mix it all with this blue fluid. I want to make note again how important it is to pour this alcohol in as slow as possible. You want to keep the blue and the clear separate. And what you're going to do to actually see the DNA is you're going to put your wooden stick down in here. Put it down in through the barrier and then draw it back up. Try it. Oh, ah. Oh, that is so cool. Ah. It's DNA. I have extracted DNA. Now, you go home and do it yourself. I'm telling you, it will blow your mind. Go out and do this. It is really awesome. If you have any tip requests, questions, improvements for me, then go ahead and send them to macdothecast at gmail.com. Stay tuned to the cast.